the number 11 pick is in. Thank you to our friends at Game Time for, uh, for bringing us this broadcast down the Game Time app. Create an account. Use promo code Locked on MLB. With the 11th pick, the Los Angeles Angels have picked Nolan Shanwell from Florida Atlantic, and they announce him as a first baseman. He's played corner infield. He's played some outfield as well. He is the pick for the Los Angeles Angels at number 18. Uh, okay, so really versatile talent. I feel like he can be competitive at third base. He can play first. Again, he can give you a left field or a right field. To me, this is an offensive first guy, though, right? Very powerful, uh, very productive. I have questions about how quickly he'll be able to move through the system because he's, in essence, jumping to competition levels, going from FAU to the minors to the majors. But I have those same questions about Zach Neto coming out of Campbell, and he made it to the bigs in about a about one year. So what have I left out of Nolan Shanwell here at 11 to the Angels? So when I look at a small school guy, a very important part of it is how you perform in the Cape. And he was bad. He struggled to hit 200 in the Cape. And that is a huge red flag. I went through and I was trying to find examples of guys who struggled in the Cape and found success in the big leagues. And, and there aren't a lot of them. And you're talking about a guy who's already first base only. And then you're talking about a guy who had poor performances in a wood bat league facing elite competition. And yeah, he put up video game numbers, but it's funny because Cam Fisher did as well, but we won't hear Cam Fisher's name called tonight. Uh, and they played in the same conference and Cam Fisher had an OPS over 800 in the Cape, but he's an unathletic first baseman who faced, who feasted not put up, you know, ridiculous numbers against bad competition. Um, I, I listen, I'm 40th. I, I'm not a I'm not a fan. Like I know people say he's an analytic darling. He's not because uh, you have to do it across. Just putting up good numbers doesn't make you an analytical darling. He put up good numbers against bad competition. When he faced good competition, he didn't perform as well, and that's why he was not the guy that was ever going to be for me. Yeah, uh, career strikeout rate seven percent, overall contact rate of eighty nine percent, and he's. I, I've noticed you talk about some of the, the analytic stuff where people fall in love with him and people like him. I noticed that some of the common advanced metrics people like to look at in zone contact, uh, swing and miss against fastballs. He does really well in some of those metrics, 94% contact rate in zone, pretty high number, uh, fastball contact rate, 97%. Uh, and then he doesn't chase a ton. So I think that's some of where you see people project out, talk about him being an analytical darling. That's kind of what they're talking about. But again, I, like you said, I do have questions because he's already limited to corners, whether it's infield or outfield. Um, he is a good defender at first base. Like, what's not, I mean, he, he's not fast, not ath super athletic, but um, he, is, he is a good defender at first base. It's just, uh, he doesn't have a lot of top line speed. And so that kind of makes a question about what's the ceiling here and what, what can he do on that. Uh, but either way, we'll see what happens. I do think some of this may be related to money. I do think he probably, the slot value is five and a quarter million on this pick. And this does feel like something where you can get him for less than the slot value. Uh, the the Angels pool is only $8.3 million. So this is a an opportunity. If he takes, say he takes four and a half, you're saving a significant amount of money that you can use other places in the draft. 